Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Southeast Dreaming Call for Presentations Info Session. I am Carmel James. And I'm Patrick Conley. Sorry, I'm distracted. I got pulled away on something. Fair, fair. That is Patrick Connolly. So we are two of the many organizers who help make sure that Southeast Dreaming is a wonderful and fun conference. Um, I am known as the magic marketer. So any tweets or emails that you see go out that are all right, that was me. If they have typos, that was Chris. <laughs> uh, and I am the reason why you're all here. I'm the session wrangler. I'm the one that uh, find, you know, gets all the sessions in. We get all the votes handled and everything, which we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, and make sure that all the speakers show up and everybody has a good time and we get the content that we're looking for for, for the conference. Yes. And so during today's presentation, you may feel free to continue to use the chat. We definitely want to hear from you if there are specific questions and want to make sure that we get those answered. So we'll go ahead and get started as to why are we doing this, right? We really wanted to make sure that there was the transparency and understanding what it is that we are looking for when we say, hey, do you want to speak at SED? Um, we also want to make, this is our way of practicing intentional inclusion. A lot of times, underrepresented and undervalued groups feel like they cannot go to a conference. They can't present. They, there are things that they cannot do because they've never done them before. So we want to remove that veil, right? We want this to be as open as possible and make sure that we are sharing up front what is expected, why is it expected, and give you a chance to ask questions about it in a very easy, non-confronting manner um, so that that's where the value comes in of having the clear expectations of the process. You get the insider knowledge. You get to hear exactly what we're looking for so that there's no mystery. There's no rug pulled out under you. We're going to be as clear as possible and reduce anxiety during this whole process. So let's, we're going to talk about the overview of the actual process. Uh, you're currently at number one. Uh, this is the info session where we're going to talk about uh, how the process works. Uh, the next thing will be opening our uh, call for papers applications. Uh, this will be sometime very soon. Uh, we don't have the, the finalized dates, but it should be somewhere near the beginning of December is when we're going to uh, open applications for papers. <clears throat> about a month and a half later, we'll close submissions. Uh, and then once we've gotten that, uh, we will do a submission evaluation, uh, speaker notification, and session. Pre uh, we'll work on preparing the sessions for the event. Now, all of these are going to be covered more in depth, so don't worry that I just kind of breezed over this just to give you an idea of the rest of what we're going to be talking about. So, speaking of sessions, these are the different tracks that we are looking to hear from people. Mind you, these are our main focus areas, but if you are talking about something that is outside of this list, that is totally okay. So when we are thinking through sessions, we are looking for things that are going to be good for admins, developers, architects, business analysts, marketers, end users, and nonprofits. The list of Salesforce values is that, but these are our top. And, and this is to let the, our attendees be able to help guide what their decisions to find because we have a lot of sessions and this helps them to at least make a first pass before they go through every session to, to see what they wanted. They can focus and look into all the nonprofit ones first if they're with a nonprofit. Uh, there's a quick question of how many session slots that we have. I believe last year we had uh, 50, 52. I don't remember. So the number of session slots depends on our venue and how many rooms we have available, as well as the timing of the conference. So it was 42 sessions last year, not including hands on trainings, which we did uh, the first day of the conference. All right. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about what makes a good session. 
Uh, we're trying to have sessions that include uh, teaching and demoing of either products or features of the platform, uh, things that are real life lessons that you have learned. Uh, this goes hand in hand with success stories uh, because you know those are life lessons. Uh, but we also want to consider the failures and learning from those failures and how you can move forward and turn a failure into a success. Uh, case studies, if you're working with things uh, that, that fit into that. Uh, we also look for group workshops where we can have hands-on trainings uh, and bring people together to actually do things. Uh, and then how-to guides are great because uh, depending on where you're at in your path, Having a uh, session that talks about how you do something and how you implement uh, can help people who have never done that before or who may be looking to do that in the future. Yeah. And one of my favorite things about success stories and the fact that it's successes and failures is that failure is just a record type of success. <laughs> but <laughs> with that, if you are thinking of something outside of it, we would like to call out you absolutely at all points in time and cost want to avoid a presentation where you are trying to sell something specifically, right? We want to recognize that we have a variety of people coming to FED to learn, and it is great that there is a product that you absolutely adore and love. But we have other ways in which you can advertise that product to everyone who is attending that is not going to interfere with their direct learning. So if you can keep it where, again, it is teaching or demoing, great. But if it is a direct sales pitch, we're not going to lie. It's not going to get accepted. As well as plagiarism. We understand the Salesforce community is fast. And we all have very similar ideas, but straight listing something from somebody else's presentation and calling it your own is always never acceptable. And I do want to say that having mentioning of products in your sessions is not bad. Uh, but if you are trying to say this product or this service is the only way to do it, and this is how you implement that, that is not what we're looking for. If you have... Uh, let's say you're talking about a success story uh, or you're talking about uh, you know, a how-to guide, you can mention that you can do this with X product, but you could also do it with Y product or you could do it in Z way natively on the platform. As long as you are giving multiple options and helping to educate, not sell. Which brings us to once you've submitted your application for presentation, what does that actually look like from an evaluation process of what do we receive? So in that picture, you notice that it was a statue and it's blind because we have a blind submission process. We will remove all identifying information. And by the way, that information includes your name, your company, if there are any awards that you've won that you've put in we remove all of that so that it is essentially anonymized and someone who is not on the selection committee does that work so those who do review it have no idea who is actually submitting. Okay. Uh, once we've gotten that uh, information to the people who are part of the selection committee, typically have five to seven people. Uh, and again, we are trying to be as inclusive and pos as possible. So we have people both of various genders, uh, uh, identities, uh, and we try to have them also be different roles inside of the Salesforce platform. Uh, if I was the only one there picking sessions, I'm going to tend to lean more towards the developer style, uh, whereas I have almost no marketing experience. So we try to bring in those people as well to try to give us a rounded approach to the selection sessions we select. Uh, the judges, independently review all of the session titles and abstracts and give them a score from one to five, five being, yes, I absolutely will go to this session, to one being, no, we don't want this uh, for various reasons. Uh, when we're looking over scoring, uh, the judges and the people scoring them are thinking, is this a topic that is relevant uh, to the people that are gonna be coming? Um, is it unique? Uh, we can, you know, we don't want to have 37 talks on the exact same thing. 
so we will try to pick unique ones that uh, spread out across all the topics that we want. Um, how many people would be interested in this discussion? There may be something that is the most amazing thing in the world, but only two people out of all the attendees are going to go to it. We're probably not going to select that because we want to, again, try to reach as many as we can. Uh, are their objectives clear? Are, are the objectives for the attendees clear? If we're reading over the abstract and we want to see what if is the attendee to this session going to get out of it? Are they going to have new skills when they walk out? Are they gonna have new information about a new Salesforce product or part of the platform? Um, are they going to have learned something from your successes or your failures? Um, we want that to be very clear when we're reading over these abstracts. Um, and then who benefits from this content? We want it to be clear that, you know, whether this is a developer, whether it's an admin, who, who is going to benefit from going to your session? And I do want to bring up, there is a question in the chat regarding sessions of the, whether or not we have session tracks focused specifically on consultants. I would say you are more than welcome to submit it if you are a consultant or want to talk about consulting, by all means, um, but it's not a designated track that we have. Yeah, I would, I would probably compile that under end users, um, just if I were to pick one of them, because we have just kind of set groups. Um, we may add an other or unspecified group to add it in there. Uh, but we, you know, we have, again, those tracks are defined because those are the ones that we've seen the majority of our users are caring about that style of talk. Yeah. And so once this evaluation process is done and bringing back around to this idea of how, like how many sessions are there going to be, we are going to be doing a 75-25 split, which means that 75% of the sessions that are selected will be selected during the blind submission or blind review process. So those are submitted, are selected 100% with no information. We have no idea. It is yeah, and just I, what was given. And I and I forgot to mention that once we have given those scores, the group comes together. Uh, and during one, maybe two nights, depending on how many sessions we have to go through, we rank them by the highest score uh, and discuss them to see, make sure that it is something that we want as a group. We place it into our session pool uh, until we have filled it out. Uh, so that way, if we have two that are you know, about the same rank, but they're the same topic, we will try to figure out which one based on the abstract or discussion uh, between a group as to which one is a better fit based on the information that's been submitted. Uh, again, the blind information. Yes. And then with the 25% of the sessions that will be remaining, this is again where we are trying to be intentional with our inclusion. So we will be asking for demographic information during our selection process so that we can make sure that when we are looking over and saying, hey, who is actually going to be our speakers? We want to make sure that we have first time speakers ever, ever in the entire Salesforce ecosystem, able to have a chance to present. First time speakers specifically at Southeast Dreaming. Individuals who are black, indigenous, or other people of color. Female, trans, and non-binary speakers. Speakers with disabilities. Now this is just a short list of some very specific demographics that we're looking for. But again, this is done with the idea of intentional inclusion. People who are first time speakers are maybe not going to get the abstract 100% correct, but we wanna make sure that we are providing space for them to grow and to learn as well. Okay. So now that we've got our sessions picked, uh, we go on to notifying people about it. Uh, after about a week, to two weeks after the call for papers close, we during that time we will do our evaluation and session selection, um, and then we will send out a notification saying that your session has been selected or has not been selected. If it has been selected, uh, we have a deadline to accept the invitation to come to Southeast Dreaming, um, and we will start the 
the actual process of going down the road and making you a speaker at this at the uh, event. Um, depending on the talk that you have given, we may say this is not a you know this is a you know you submitted a good talk. But we want to maybe change this from a theater session to being one of our hands-on trainings. So we may kind of shift that away from being a uh, the session type that you had originally asked for. Um, and to help fill out to a better fit for the information. Uh, also, if you just because you get a you know uh, an email saying that you were not selected doesn't mean that you might not be selected again. Uh, after this one week deadline is up, uh, if we don't hear back from people, uh, we will you know take them off the table. We will try to find either a fit for the track or the similar topic. Uh, and again, the team will meet back in and make sure that we fill in those uh, intentional uh, choices. And then we will reach out to the additional speakers to try to find uh, somebody else that will come in. Uh, we know that a lot can happen in a month and a half. Uh, so you may not be able to come anymore. Uh, or, you know, you may have, unfortunately, we have seen where we have not been able to reach somebody. Uh, they have changed jobs. They have used an email address that's no longer valid. They fat fingered something. We try to go out of our way. Uh, last year, we had some people that put in bad contact information. I tracked them down on the Ohana Slack, or we had people find them in LinkedIn, and we will try to find you. Uh, but if we can't, then we'll have to go on with and try to find another speaker to fill that hole. Um, so once your session has been accepted, uh, we will work with you to do session development. Uh, this is your time to build up your slide deck to get your session fleshed out. And if you have any questions for us, we are there to help you. Um, we will then ask for our first draft of slides, uh, and then the team will review those slides. Uh, and some of, some of them in more detail than others, but we're reviewing them to make sure, again, that you are delivering on what your abstract showed. Um, and to making sure that you're not doing something you're not supposed to be doing, like selling. Um, or, you know, just, you know, you submitted something on flow and now you're doing a, a talk on nonprofit service pack because that's not going to work. Uh, we'll provide you the feedback on the first draft um, and then we will open it up for optional coaching sessions. Uh, this is a way for you, if you don't feel super comfortable uh, about speaking in front of a group, we will have a chance to, for you to run through your presentation uh, with somebody from our team and give feedback on that session and help you to build that to be better. Uh, and then about two weeks prior, prior to the conference, we'll have the final slide decks that'll be submitted. That'll include uh, all the information from the previous feedback and coaching sessions, as well as information for our sponsors uh, and things of that nature to make sure that, that the slide deck is ready to go on the day of the conference. If you are a first time speaker for Southeast Dreaming, uh, we are going to require that you meet with a session buddy. It's going to be somebody from our team or somebody from the community that's working with our team to review sessions and do a session dress rehearsal. Uh, I know it may seem like a lot for a community conference, but we really want you to provide your best foot forward. Um, if you've never done it before, it can be kind of daunting to go through a session, make sure your timing is right and that everything flows well. And we want the to make it so that you, you know, provide your best talk and you can go forward. Uh, so that's going to be part of it, doing the slide deck review, making sure everything flows correctly, and help giving feedback on changes that could be made. And again, um, this is. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say I was going to answer the questions of is a conference personal in person or virtual it will be in person, uh, just like it was last year. And the reason that we're doing this first time support is because again, when we're thinking about inclusion, there are groups of people who may have never done this before. And again, we want to reduce that anxiety. We want to try and make sure that they understand that once they are in the Salesforce community, however they got here, they are here and they are supported. And so we are going to be making ourselves available to make sure that, as Patrick said, they're gonna have the best speaker experience possible. Yep, and I would love after your first time at Southeast Dreaming 
that session goes fantastic. You submitted to Dreamforce. And if I see you on a stage at Dreamforce, I'm like, hey, they started with us. And that's what I want to see is I want you to be able to continue your journey in spreading your knowledge. And we want to be able to help you do that. Yeah. Which leads us to that's the end of our presentation today. That is the call for presentation session. And there's a very great question about what are the conference dates. And we do not have those dates yet. <laughs> we, we can say mid to late March or early April. We are still hammering out dates with our venues. Um, we're trying to figure out what venue we're going to have the conference at. Uh, so we want to make sure that we can do it at a, at a venue that will support us the best. And we have not finalized all that contract and dates and stuff yet, but soon. And I should note that the venue would be in Atlanta, Georgia. Yep. Um, as far as sharing the slide deck of the pertinent info, uh, in the next couple of days, uh, I'm going to convert all this information into a blog post uh, that we'll have up on our website, um, as well as we'll share out this recording uh, that we've made here once we get it, and then we'll put that up onto our YouTube. Uh, the best way to stay up for to date with the event info is going to be through Twitter, um, or you can sign up for our mailing list. Uh, we have that managed through MailChimp. Uh, I believe that if you've signed up for this, we'll probably throw you into that mailing list and we'll send out an, uh, a save the date once we've got the date picked. Oh, no, we will absolutely be using this list. So whatever email you registered with, that is the email that is going into our system so that we can notify you when things come ha like happen. And again, if there are typos, that's Chris's fault. <laughs> um, okay, so we have a question. Uh, if you're not selected, will there be any feedback given or score revealed so that the applicant has additional details to understand where they need to improve? I, I will say in general, no, mostly because we have so many that we have to go through and providing that specific uh, of uh, feedback to everybody is going to prove very difficult. However, if you get a re uh, you know an email saying that you have not been selected, feel free to reach out to myself personally if you want more information and I can talk to you about what what our thought process of, of why we did not choose your your session and I'll gladly be as transparent as possible. Um, just want to, again, be clear that we have, you know, hundreds of sessions submitted and we just can't really give that granular feedback across all of them. And we have a question from Amber, or at least their hand is raised. Go for it. Hey guys, thank you. The, the information was great. Um, so I have a question, right? As as it would be my first time presenting if I got chosen. So is there an outline to start of what the things that you want for presented and where would I find those of going, hey, this is how you want the idea submitted. This is what you want it to look like, what you're looking on. Where would I find that? We don't have anything specific. Uh, there is a, uh, a session that has been done before by, I think Mike Martin, uh, by Salesforce about how to present, to make an abstract for Dreamforce. Uh, I will make sure that that is linked in the blog post that I write. Uh, but it's more that when you're submitting that abstract, be clear about what is what is in it for the user and what you're going to be talking about. Um, you, it, I have never seen an abstract that I've been like, uh, they wrote too much. Mo for the most part, it's, I see abstracts that are a single pair, a single sentence sometimes. And I'm like, yeah, that one's not getting picked. I don't even have to read it to know that not enough effort has been put into that. Um, Got it. And I would add, when in doubt, think about it like you're a business analyst. You're answering who, what, when, where, why, and how. Right? If, you, if that it can be clearly communicated to us, even if it's just five sentences, that could be better than 20 sentences where we didn't get any value information out of it of like who is this for what are they going to get where would they turn if they needed additional help things like that perfect thank you guys i appreciate it um and this does tie into a question that rachel asked was will speaker information be on the website as well absolutely uh once the sessions have been selected and you and speakers have been uh 
you know, notified and they've come back with us and provided us with all the information uh, that we need, such as, you know, uh, name, preferred pronouns, photos, things of that nature, those get added to our website. Uh, the previous year session information is there and will continue to be there. Uh, so you will be able to have a deep link to your session that you can share. Uh, we do provide social images that are branded and with your pretty face on it and information about your session and when the conference is. Uh, so that is also a good place to go back and look at previous year's sessions uh, and see how their abstracts were formatted uh, to see what kind of information and talks we have given about on the, in the past. Uh, and just because we have accepted a talk about something in the past doesn't mean we don't want it again. Uh, you know, there is all there are always new things to be talked about, and there are always new people being brought into the Salesforce ecosystem. So something that has been talked about once or you think has been presented to death, that might be something that somebody has never heard before, and we don't say no to those. Um, so, go ahead. I'm going to say we can let Bobby go ahead and go and ask their question. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Uh, so this is probably going to be a better question, probably really for you, Patrick. Uh, I'm a developer as well. And as you know, Salesforce's definition of definition of developer is super broad. It's everything from I make an app and put some tabs on it to I'm deep inside trigger code, Apex code. What type of attendee that goes to Southeast Dreaming do you see coming in? What is the type of talk where should it be aimed? Because if I submit yes. something, I don't want to leave anybody behind because I'm going deep into SFDX metadata, XML editing, or do I keep it more broad or general for- The for answer is yes. Things? We we have all kinds. We have people who show up that have submitted patch request or pull requests to SFDX that know the metadata inside and out and back and front. We have people that have, don't even know what CLI stands for. Uh, so- you know, I would say if you're doing something that is very technical, um, like, like you were talking about, you know, deep dive into SFDX, be specific about what that is for and what the goals of that are. Uh, just saying deep dive into it is not going to be great because I want to know what is getting out of it. That we will have, especially for the developer side of the house, we lack in presentations to choose from for that. So, mm -hmm. you know, things that stand out, things that are well formatted are more likely to be brought in because they are interesting. Um, maybe not something as hyper-focused as a very small plugin in SFDX, because again, that may not reach a broad enough of developers. But if you're saying this is an advanced development topic, that is definitely something that we do need and cover because we do have advanced developers. We do have uh, point and click developers, we have everybody that is, you know, all over the place. Yep. Um, yes, and and like uh, was said there, we do we had a session that was extremely technical on the Slack SDK this past year. Um, and we we again, we've had all kinds of talks brought in. Yeah, no, and I, I was in that session, but I also noticed a lot of people were getting left behind because of the speed of it. And so that's why I didn't know yeah. if there was an attendee profile that you knew of for developers. Yeah, that. That could have been a, a little bit of a misstep on our behalf for putting in information in the abstract as to what to be expected. That could be people that underestimated their skill level, or that could be people that are just there and trying to absorb it. And maybe some of those words will mean something to them later. Uh, you know, we we let people go where they want to go. Yeah. Thank you, Patrick. So, um, um, we have another question. Uh, the question is, is travel paid for by the presenter or by the conference? So travel is not covered by us. We will cover, if you're selected as a presenter, we will cover your conference fees. Um, but travel, hotel, all that stuff is not covered. Uh, unfortunately, we are a small conference. We are 100% funded by the tickets and sponsors that we get. So we just can't you know, reasonably expect to pay for uh, presenters, uh, travels, and hotels. Um, hotel will be part of a block that we do get through the, the hotel that does provide a reduced rate, so it won't be the full rate that you would get just walking in the front door of the hotel, um, but that, that is that. 
And another question is, is any of this different for hands-on sessions? Yes. Uh, for hands-on trainings, we do typically do that non-blind. Because that is a larger time commitment, they're typically about two to two and a half hour long block. Uh, and they are very, I don't say regimented, but you do want to have uh, the knowledge that somebody knows exactly how they're doing with the hands-on training and exactly what they're doing. Because presenting a two hour hands-on training is worlds different than presenting a half hour slide deck. Um, we do look at the session information that has been selected, submitted for hands-on trainings to get some idea of maybe we can bring some of those over. We do have a separate uh, call for hands-on training that we do is brought in uh, and pieced together based on what's available. Uh, we do try uh, to say, like, if we see somebody submitted a hands-on training, try to connect them with somebody else to help them that may have submitted a talk that didn't get accepted on that. For example, if we're doing like advanced flows, uh, we might have seen somebody that has a flow talk that didn't get selected and see if we can connect that hands-on trainer with the person who is uh, submitted a flow talk. So that way they can assist in the hands-on training, either by being part of the room monitor or actually you know, partially presenting uh, to kind of help build up that knowledge and help build up that confidence. More questions. True or false? If you've presented it before, it's sometimes helpful to pro provide a link to the deck or reporting. I will say I don't click through any decks. Um, I look at it purely based off of uh, the abstract. And mostly that is because it's harder for us to anonymize uh, the slide decks that come through because, you know, we, you know, I can't go through and edit your session, your your presentation in your Google Drive to remove that information. Um, and again, just because you have a slide deck doesn't mean that that information is going to either still be relevant to your abstract or, uh, you know, I want, I want to, we want to see what your abstract is going to have. And that's going to, what's going to bring people into your session because that's what's going to be on the website. We're not going to have your slide deck available to them before the session starts. More questions. Is SED typically one day and are speakers presenting only once or multiple times? Uh, South Dreaming is two days. Uh, the first day is typically hands-on trainings. Uh, we do have uh, some other activities that we've done in the past. I don't know if we'll do them again. We've done some like trailhead a thons previously. Mm -hmm. Chance for people to get into town. If they get in early, they can you know, participate in the hands-on trainings. Uh, and participate in the other things, visit the the event uh, sponsors if they're set up by then. Um, and then the second day, which uh, will be where the sessions are, uh, we we try to only have a person speak once per per year um, in terms of like if they're uh, you know we don't want to have one person give three sessions at South Streaming. Uh, we have, I don't say make exceptions, but we do know that if somebody has submitted a session and they say they have a co-presenter and that co-presenter is a primary uh, presenter, we have been okay with that in the past and let them have a co-presenter that is also a, a you know a secondary or presenter by themselves. Uh, but it's more that the person who submitted it and the primary person is not you know monopolizing every track. Um, more questions. What about a session that was presented at DF or, well, Dreamforce or Trailhead DX in the past? Uh, I mean, if you're not plagiarizing the session, uh, that's more than okay to submit it. Again, uh, I have submitted my sessions that I have done at Dreamforce at uh, other events and submitted them uh, to different conferences, and that's great. You know. Just because you have done it before doesn't mean we don't need to see it. And even if it's been recorded, people learn differently. I know I can't watch a recorded session and really get much out of it, but I can sit in a room and listen to somebody give that session the exact same way. Even if they did every bit of the same language and slide deck and enunciation, 
uh, my brain just tunes out when I watch a video, whereas being in the room, I actually can pay attention a bit more. Uh, so, you know, don't don't worry about uh, if it's already been presented, present, you know, submitted again. And more questions of what is the estimated date for when speaker selection would be communicated? Yes, it is one week after the close, one to two yeah, weeks. One to two weeks. So if we close mid-January, it would be, uh, you know, before Fe the beginning of February, if, you know, that rough timeline. We'll have exact dates here soon. Um, we just have to, you know, finalize those internally before we get those announced. And our all hands-on trainings, two hours. I've seen hands-on trainings that are 45 minutes and didn't cut it. Is the application different? Uh, so last year, our hands-on trainings were actually an hour and a half. I misspoke as to their length. Um, and that's part of the reason, again, why we uh, try to hand-select those and make sure that the hands-on trainings that we present uh, fill up that amount of time and Again, try not to go over because some hands-on trainings are easy to run long, especially if you have to do something and wait for an entire room full of people to complete that task. Uh, that timing is difficult. Um, so it will be a different application for hands-on training. But that, again, that doesn't mean that we won't take uh, from the pool of submitted select uh, speakers to try to get ideas to maybe can help them convert that into a hands-on. We're all out of questions so far. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Carrie has their hand up. Go for it, Carrie. Hey, I was just going to take my hand down and put it in the chat. Um, can I clarify for the new people that have never done this before that the submission process is actually kind of a guided form that you fill out and you're not submitting something just freestyle? And I just wanted to make that clear because I think when Amber asked about formatting and things like that earlier, I just want them to know that it's, uh, I don't know, a form where you're yeah, filling the, things the, out. The form will ask for your formatting. first name, last name, email address, the demographic information we talked about earlier, the title of your session. Um, and I cannot, under, I cannot understate, title is important. Um, that is going to be one of your big hooks. Uh, so if you're talking about flow, don't just say an introduction to flow. Like that's that's a terrible title. You can say, you know, what you're going to do with the flow, you know, learn learn to be a flow master. That's a better title. Uh, then you'll have your abstract, which will be a large text field where you can put in multiple paragraphs uh, about your session. Um, and then you'll have the track information uh, as part of that as well. And then that'll get submitted and put to us. Um, yeah. I, I would also note, if you've ever wanted to be a marketer, this is a very good time to do that. It can be hard, but this is your brand. You are a product and what you are about to deliver is going to be seen by hundreds, if not thousands of people, right? Where you start is not exactly where you're going to end. Um, so taking the time to come up with cool puns or trying to make us laugh. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, we laugh at, and sometimes we like those things that are funny and cool and punny, um, especially if they've got really good gravitas behind it. Again, yeah. that value, and it's if clear it, who's going to get it. And if it sticks in our brain like that, that, that goes a long way. Uh, you can have the, the most, you know, perfectly formatted uh, abstract I've ever seen in your life that has literally all the information but if it doesn't come across in a, a, a meaningful way that will bring me in and make me want to do it, that is going to at least not stick in my brain as a, as a person who's reviewing as much as somebody who is, the, you know, two sessions the exact same. Somebody has got a better hook to their title, better, you know, kind of narrative to their abstract is going to bring, bring it in better. And it's totally okay to tell it like a story, right? There are real people who are reading this. We understand all the same challenges that you do. Speak to us and, and feel free to write it like it's kind of like a conversation. So, uh, 
Other question, will we get a recording? Yes, we will make this information available after uh, this is all done. Uh, I'm not seeing any, oh, oh no. Absolutely, right. submit, hit that submit button until your fingers bleed if you want. <laughs> Um, yeah. But again, I would rather have one really good submission than 10 mediocre submissions. Um, so put the same amount of effort into every submission that you get. Um, and so that, uh, again, I want you to, you know, if it, if it comes down to firing off 10 quick ones or one or two really solid ones, go for the one or two really solid ones. We can tell if you're going to submit like six about flows and they're slightly different. I can read and say based on formatting and styling that that's the same person and they've submitted six of these exact same ones. That's going to be a bit of a turnoff. Even with the anonymization, people write in a unique enough way that you can tell based on writing and formatting that it's the same person submitting it. And for the recording, the question was, what were your thoughts on someone submitting multiple ideas? Yep. All right. Are there any other questions? I can see in the chat that people are already starting to try and find their own co-presenters. So by all means, you are all in the community. Use each other. Well, if there are no other questions, we'll go ahead and stop sharing and stop the recording in a second. Um, just want to say a big thank you for all of you who have attended and for all of you who are going to be watching online um, afterwards. We really appreciate you taking this time to come and learn more about what this process is like so that you yourself have a better experience in this call for presentation process. If there are any other questions, you're more than welcome to email info at sedreaming. Dreaming se dreaming. Without, se dreaming. Thank you. Without the G. Dot com. Um, and one of us will see it and answer, or you can always tweet us. That is a surefire way to get our attention. Yep. And um, or reach out to. I'm on the the SFXD Discord. We're on the uh, Ohana Slack. Uh, we are wherever lots of Salesforce people exist, we are there. Yes, just introduce yourself and, you know, tell us what it is that you're looking for. And, and there is a uh, event dash Southeast Dreamin channel in the Ohana Slack. Um, if you want to join there and discuss this or meet with other people who are uh, previous and maybe future attendees of the event. All right. I would and just like that, to take... Sorry, can I just say thank you all so much for putting this on. Uh, it's such an amazing display of transparency. And especially with your core focus on really like having first time speakers and underrepresented presenters, like this is such a phenomenal way to ease that fear and anxiety of the initial submission. So thank you so much for this. You're welcome. You're welcome. With that, we are going to stop the recording.